So we're going to do an example now of some independence stuff. So I've got these four numbers, one, two, three, and four. I've said I pick one of the four numbers at random. What's the probability that I pick a multiple of two? Well, quite clearly that's going to be a half because I've got two numbers which are a multiple of two. For the probability I pick a multiple of four, there's only one number that's a multiple of four there. Let's just do that as a little bit under the bottom. So the probability of that is going to be a quarter. And I've said explain conceptually why these two events are not independent, why they are dependent on each other. Because if you pick a multiple of two, sorry, a multiple of four, then you have also picked a multiple of two. So if you pick a multiple of four, you have also picked a multiple of two, which means that if you pick one of them, you're affecting whether you've picked the other one as well. It's a little bit tricky to explain that, but it's saying that if you have picked, um, if one of them gets picked as a multiple of four, it's going to change the chances about whether it's going to be a multiple of two or not. If you have picked a multiple of two, it is not necessarily going to be a multiple of four. So the other way around, it doesn't work quite in the same way. And it just says show that these events are not independent. This is a really, really common exam question. All you need to do is to either show that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A and times probability of B, or that it does not equal that. So I'm going to work out what is the probability that I pick a multiple of two and a multiple of four. Well, the only number which is a multiple of two and a multiple of four is four, so it is a quarter. But the probability that I pick a multiple of two multiplied by the probability that I pick a multiple of four is going to be a half times a quarter, which is an eighth. Because a quarter does not equal an eighth, these events are not independent. So if you pick a multiple of four, you get also pick a multiple of two, but if you pick a multiple of two, you haven't necessarily picked a multiple of four. So their probabilities will be affecting each other. Um, okay, let's try some of these in some context as well. We're gonna do a mixture now of mutually exclusive and of independent. So events A and B are mutually exclusive and we've got probability of A and the probability of B. Now, like I said before, I always just like to draw a Venn diagram. We know that mutually exclusive means that they don't overlap. Here's A and B. A is 0.2, B is 0.4. Well, the probability of A or B, we just know that the probability of A or B is actually just the probability of A plus the probability of B. And when you look at that on the diagram, it's clearly just gonna be this section and this section together, which is just going to be 0.2 plus 0.4, which is 0.6. Then it says find the probability of A, but it is not B. Probability of A, but not B, well, that's just gonna be A because A isn't going to be anyway, going to be B anyway, so it's just 0.2. Now I haven't quite finished filling in this Venn diagram now because I need to find out what this outside probability is. Well, if I've got 0.2 and 0.4, that makes 0.6, so there'll have to be another 0.4 out here. So the probability that it is neither A nor B, that's just going to be 0.4, the probability that goes on the outside. Okay, a really easy one down here. It says that events A and B are independent, and we want to find out the probability of A and B. So if they are independent, we know that the probability of A and B is just equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So to find the probability of A and B, I'm just going to multiply a third by a fifth, which is 1 over 15. OK, let's try another one. The Venn diagram shows the number of students in a particular class who watch any three popular TV programmes. Find the probability that the student chosen at random watches B or C or both. So here is B, here is C, and the both bit is the 10. But that's fine because we've already included that. So the probability that they watch B or C or both for that first question, 
Well, those numbers, we've got four, five, 10, and seven. So let's be super lazy. Let's add them together. Four, five, 10, and seven. It's going to be 26 out of, I'm gonna add on the one and the three. So it's 26 out of 30. 26 out of 30, that's gonna to simplify to 13 out of 15. Happy to leave that as a fraction. Then it says, determine whether watching A and watching B are statistically independent. Well, if they are independent, we know that the probability of A and B, I'm just gonna use that intersection notation to speed up my writing, is the probability of A times the probability of B. So looking at this diagram, A and B is just going to be their overlap, which is four that we've got here. So that's four out of 30 or two out of 15. The probability of A times by the probability of B. Well, the probability of A is these two numbers, which is seven out of 30. And the probability of B is going to be these, which is 19 out of 30. And I'm just going to multiply these together. So that's going to be 7 out of 30 multiplied by 19 out of 30. And we get 133 out of 900. 133 out of 900. Then we just need a sentence to say, because the probability of A and B is not equal to the probability of A times the probability of B, then watching A and B are not statistically independent. Now, what does this actually mean? Okay, it means that the event of one of them is going to affect the chances of the other one. So I don't know, maybe if show A was a, was like an anime show and show B was also an anime show, then there's probably going to be, um, they're not going to be independent from each other. If you like anime, you're probably more likely to watch B if you already watch A. And if you um, don't like anime, you're probably less likely to want to watch them. So they're going to be interacting with each other. Um, and that's because maybe there's some kind of link between these programs. It's not completely independent. It's not independent from each other. OK, now we're going to try one like this. It's got some algebra in. So this question says that the Venn diagram shows the probability of each event. Given that A and B are independent, determine the possible values of X. OK, so a little bit trickier because we've got some unknown values going on here. But if they are independent, we know that the probability of A and B is going to be equal to the probability of A times by the probability of B. Well, the probability of A and B from this diagram is their overlap, which is just going to be X. And the probability of A, sometimes people find this a little bit harder to spot. The probability of A is just 0.3 plus X. And I'm going to put this in brackets because I'm about to multiply it with something else that I've got over here. And I'm also going to multiply it now by the probability of B. And the probability of B is going to be X plus 0.2 or 0.2 plus X. Now, you sh hopefully are telling me right now this is a type of equation and it is a quadratic equation. So I'm going to expand the brackets on the right hand side. I'm going to be super lazy to do 0 0.3 times 0 0.2, which is 0 0.06. That is very lazy of me. Plus 0.2x plus 0.3x plus x squared. I'm going to get everything all onto one side. So I'm going to have x squared. I've got 0.2 plus 0.3 is 0.5. I'll minus the 1. So I have minus 0.5x and I have plus 0.06. And then you can just put this straight into your equation solver. So I'm just going to quickly grab my graphics calculator so that I can just put this in here. OK, so when you go into the equation solver that you need, I'm going to put in those different coefficients and hopefully it's going to give me the value of X that we're expecting. So for my, sim um, for my polynomial, I'm going to say I've got 1 minus 0.5 and 0.06 as the coefficients, and it gives me these two different values for x. It says that x could be equal to 
or it says that x could be equal to 0 0.2. And the examiners know that you're likely to just do this kind of thing on your calculator. Well, this is pretty good because it said determine the possible values of x. So there's two potential values that we could have for x there. Um, I want to check, though, that they do all make sense, because if I ever had anything adding up to more than one, then it wouldn't work. So if x was equal to 0 0.3, my diagram would have looked like this. I would have had 0 0.3. Whoops, that's not very clearly drawn at all. Always good to have big circles. I'd have 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Yeah, that's good, because that's all going to add up to less than 1, and y would be equal to 0 0.2. If I had it with the 0 0.2 in the overlap, I would have 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, and then y would be 0 0.3. So both of those situations do seem possible. If I had it in such a way that they added up to more than one inside here, that wouldn't be a possible value of x, okay? So there's a few questions that you can have a go at here, and then you're gonna go and do exercise 5c for me. So pause the video, see if you can do these ones yourself, and then see how you do when I go through them. Okay, there are three events, a, b, and c. The events A and B are mutually exclusive. Draw a Venn diagram which represents this information. So we don't know anything about um, any of the other events. We just know that A and B are mutually exclusive to each other. So I'm going to draw my box to start off with. Now I'm going to draw A and I'm going to draw B. They are going to be mutually exclusive, but I think C probably could overlap with them. So I'm going to do them in that order. I'm going to have A and B are mutually exclusive so they don't overlap and C is going to be the bit that they overlap with. It says, if the probability of A is 0 0.1 and B is 0, point, is 0 0.6, determine the probability that it is neither A nor B. Well, that means that this whole section here is going to be 0 0.1. The whole section here for B is going to be 0 0.6. So the probability that it's neither of them is just going to be 1 minus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.6 which is 0.3. So this probability here is going to be 0.3. Last of all, the Venn diagram shows the number of people who each who like each of two different colours. Determine if A and B are independent. So we're saying, does people's colour preference matter? Is them liking one colour going to encourage them to like another colour or not? OK, so we know that if they're independent, so if they are independent, the probability of A and B would be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Well, the probability of A and B in this case is going to be 4 out of how many people are there in total? 4 out of 15. And the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, well, A looks like it's going to be 10 out of 15, and B looks like it's going to be 9 out of 15. So I'm going to do 10 out of 15 times 9 out of 15. And I get 2 fifths. Do I do that right? 10 out of 15 times 9 out of 15. Good. And 2 fifths is not equal to 4 fifteenths. So the probability of A and B is not equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Hence, A and B are not independent. Okay. So why don't you have a go at exercise 5C now?